Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and welcome to I Am Loved Church. Uh, today's series, we're going to be talking about the eyes. Uh, we're glad that you showed up. I'm airing this, I'm recording this on Friday, and I'm going to be airing this on Sunday morning, so come up. through for this past week, I believe is what God wants y'all to hear, um, is the eyes. Just like Eve was tempted in the garden by her eyes, she saw the fruit of knowledge and she was tempted. And a lot of us, we're tempted daily. Uh, the ways that we're tempted is what we look at, such as Facebook, social media, and all that stuff. Even everywhere. I want to give you an example. One of it was... We were watching a movie, um, it was like the Oceans movies with like Brad Pitt, George Clooney and so forth. And then suddenly we're watching another movie with like Brad Pitt, another Oceans movie. And suddenly we're watching another movie with Brad Pitt, which wasn't an uh, uh, a Oceans movie. And suddenly we're watching another movie with Brad Pitt. So you get the idea. It's basically what Jesus talks about when he talks about seeds. Um, I'm a filmmaker myself. I've done a few jobs for people and they have their business logo and they want their business logo everywhere. So we have to be very careful about what we look at because it, it may lead us and it guides our thoughts and it guides our actions as well. You may find yourself soaking in some information that you don't want in your life, which is gonna um, cause you to sin. You know, one minute you're over here, I know you guys know it, looking online and you're looking at YouTube and suddenly you find yourself, where'd that happen? You know, how did I get over here? You know, how did I commit this sin? You know, and then you have to repent. And that, those things um, sow into your eternity and they sow into your life. So be very cautious of what you look at. Uh, if you want to experience more of God, read his Bible. Read the word of God. You will experience and you will hear from God more clearly and what you need to do in this life, you'll feel more peace. And basically, long story short, if you want to live a good life, stay in God's word. You know, one of the biggest things that I've noticed is far, as far as church is this. If I wanted to get financial advice, I go to a financial consultant. If I wanted to get child daycare, hear advice from them, I would go and research about that. If I wanted to get a burger, I go to Burger King. If I wanted to get a pizza, I go to Pizza Hut. You get the idea. People want to go to church to hear the Word of God, but for some reason, the Word of God isn't being preached, and it needs to. It needs to be studied, and, and not even a sense of study, because I want to bring you into a little closer intimacy. Yes, it's important to study some, something, the Word of God. You would think, when well, actuality, that's not very relational, personally speaking. I don't hang out with my friends and they don't study me. Hopefully not, right? They don't sit there with a notepad like, oh, what's he going to do? What's he going to say next? You know, what did he really mean by that? And um, I don't find that very uh, relational. And I think the God that we serve is very relational. And he wants to have a relationship with you. You know, so stop going into the word of God with an agenda to see, oh, what does God have to say? to me and how can I study and use this and all and articulate and all that stuff. Yes, those things can be important. They do teach us here, but God wants to teach us here. So when I go and I read the Word of God, I'm not even like expecting anything. I'm, I'm expecting anything. I'm not coming at it with an agenda and I don't come at people with an agenda, you know. I guess those are lawyers. Lawyers come at people with agendas. They kind of, you know, I want to try to get you to say something when they ask you questions and stuff like that. So that's not the God that I worship. That's not how I want to be treated either. So I don't look at the Bible that way, and I try not to treat people this way. But we're all what we are. Um, yeah, the eyes are very powerful. And here's another thing that God spoke to me about. He says, 
It's in Psalms 95, 11. And another one, which I'm going to quote right now, is when Jesus speaks. He says, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives it. And what he means by that is people have peace with their finances. They have peace with their relationships. They have peace with, you know, whatever, worldly peace. Peace, uh, you know, that they're beautiful or peace, peace that doesn't come from God. Right now in my life, uh, me and my wife, we're going through some crazy things, you know, things that would put people, would not give people peace, you know. Uh, let's just say that it's very chaotic. However, there's a sense of peace that I have, even though, you know, things aren't going the way that I want them to. I kind of think of Oompa Loompa or... Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, where that one girl, she's just like, I want it, and I want it now. Or my kids, they scream and they holler all night, give me a bottle, give me this, give me, give me, give me. And that's kind of the, the way of our, our nature is to just war. We want what we want, you know, where I work. They're just people want what they want, you know. And Jesus came to... Uh, give our hearts peace. So even when we don't get what we want, we can still find peace. And that's the eternal life that he came. And Psalms 95, 11, he basically says, for, for the people who don't have peace, that is my wrath. The wrath of God is basically, you don't have peace because you don't feel like you're good enough, or you don't feel like you have enough. And that is the wrath of God. And in Genesis, he says, you will work the ground until the day you die. Dang. He says, if you don't have what you need now, you'll never have enough. If you don't feel good enough now, you'll never feel good enough. If you don't feel smart enough and sufficient right now, you'll never feel smart and sufficient. And that is the wrath that abides on all humanity. And that's the competition and the coveting that we see in this world. But he says, be not of the world even though you live in the world. So, within that being said, I see a lot of Christians who don't go into the world. Let me say that again. I see a lot of Christians who don't go into the world. They have their little Christian lifestyle. But it's more than just a lifestyle. It's about going into the world and being an example. And I'll tell you, that's the front lines. And I work at a place, I'm not going to say, y'all probably know where. But I'm in the world where I hear the gossip and I hear the backstabbing and I'm a part of that. And that is a, that is a test of faith, man. Like I could talk about this person or this and that, or I could readjust and really show them Jesus. And one of the things that's, that's uh, a lot of you ministers out there, you guys... You guys, you guys need to go into the world. Jesus says, go into the world. Go and preach to the nations. But you can't do that if you're sitting behind your desk all day. You can't do that if you're not part of it. And you're not making yourself known. And one of the issues I had with this minister was I would tell him the challenges I'd face, but he'd never tell me he'd face any challenge. That's not relation. That makes me feel like you're a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a science project and you're the scientist you know you have a word for everything that I'm going through but you have not gone through any of it you're not going through anything it seems like you're just living on floating in clouds you're not bearing each other's burdens because you have no burdens to bear and you're not sharing each other's sins and sharing each other's burdens so I want to encourage you guys to just share each other's burdens not to you know basically complain but to show me that you're human and that's what jesus came to do he came to show us that god can relate to us he can relate to our struggles and our pain so for the religious people that think you're perfect you're not perfect and the way you're going to relate and save people to get people to jesus is to show them that you struggle just like them and jesus did that with himself he got angry he got frustrated he even got jealous so, you know, I've, I've had a lot of plans in my life, 
about what I want to do, who I want to be, where I want to go. But just when I was baptized, I didn't realize the importance of this calling. And a lot of us still don't realize how important it is. When you live by faith, this is what it means to me. When I read the Bible, I take it literally. Jesus says, don't plan for tomorrow. He says it comes from evil. James says it. James is Jesus' brother. He says it multiple times. But I see people do it. When I was baptized, and as I foreshad and as I look back on it, what Jesus is saying is, let go. Let go. Let God. Every day. Wake up and surrender. Wake up and surrender, surrender, surrender. Let's die today. Let's die from our own will. Jesus said multiple times, he said, your will be done. Dang. And I got plans and I want to do things, but God, he's got different plans and he wants to do different things. You know, and it's completely, it's a complete surrenderance to God. And it's scary because faith basically means trust. Do you trust me? The Lord says, do you trust me? Do you trust surrendering your entire life to me? Every moment in your life, do you trust me? And it's been, this is, I'm over, a little over three years now, knowing the Lord since I first got saved, and I'll never forget it. And when I got baptized, that was a walk of faith. I heard some voice, he, he couldn't, the pastor is amazing, it was amazing, I'll never forget that. The way he preached, and he still preaches like that. It's inspiring. Full spirit, man, I saw Jesus in him, I saw God. In this man one of the things I want to talk about is righteousness righteousness yes integrity but righteousness not integrity of the world it's not worldly integrity it's not worldly righteousness it's beyond it's heavenly it's spiritual it's discerned not of human understanding but spirit spirituality Jesus is God, and he was arguing with human beings, children. They don't understand anything. We don't understand yet nothing. But the thing that I've noticed in this world is people take sides. That's not of God. They'll tell their neighbor who hates each other. For example, you got A, Johnson, and you got A, you know, uh, Bob. They dislike each other. He'll tell, you know, Johnson and Bob basically whatever they want to hear. And that's what I see in the world. That's the spirit of this world, the Antichrist that moves through the ears of people. He basically said he, he's, the, he's, the, he's the, the enemy of the wind. You know, people hear things and they just believe it. They don't test it. They don't think about it. Is that true? Would so-and-so really do that? They just believe me. But anyways, uh, I see that a lot. Nobody has the, the, the boldness to speak up and, and rebuke that. Jesus says this. He says the gate is narrow. It's very narrow. And I'll tell you personal experience. This is how narrow it is. He says anyone who loves father, daughter, mother, child, even husband and wife, I know what you're thinking. Anyone, he says, more than they love me. And who is he? He's the truth, filled with grace and truth. He said, he's the truth. Anyone who loves these people more than they love me, they're not worthy. But one of the things that I've noticed in this world is people want to take sides to get what they want or from doing the right thing. Oh, 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 y'all can come in. Y'all can come in. Okay, I accept you. I accept you. I accept you. But you, no, not you. But Jesus says you have to you have to rebuke everybody. So if your wife or your husband or your friend or your mom or your spouse or your kids are not acting aligned, he says you you have no be you have no best friends in this world. Your best friends is truth and righteousness. That's your best friend because that's what God wants from you. So it says in Psalms, David says, if I have a thousand enemies in my courts, I will stand for the truth. Jesus loved the truth so much he died for it. But some of us, we don't want to stand up for righteousness because we're afraid to stand out. We're afraid for everyone to be against us. And that's what it's going to take. And that's the test of this life. 
Do you really love God till death? The apostles, the 12 apostles, they gave their life. They gave their friends, they gave their family to speak truth to an untruthful, unrighteous world. Are you willing to do that? And that's what it takes. When you said that you surrendered to Christ, you said, I'm going to die. Even if I die, even if I have to get divorced, even if I have to lose these friends, I'm going to tell the truth no matter what, even if I lose my job. Jesus says, you cannot have security in this world and have security in heaven. You cannot be loved by God and be loved by man. But I see the enemy moving in this world. I see it. Him, it, whatever. Moving. Oh, I'm afraid. I'm afraid of what these people are going to think over here. Or these people are going to think about me over here. But Jesus says, he says, you can only have one. You can't be rich in this world and be rich with God. You cannot love God and love people. Yes, you can love people and love God, but what he's saying is true love is correcting your neighbor. True love is rebuking them and disciplining them when they need to be rebuked and disciplined. When Jesus died on that cross, even his own disciples had all forsaken him. And he's saying, anyone who wants to follow me, and if you call yourself a Christian, he says, you have to abandon this world. You have to abandon everyone in a sense of when it, if it comes down to it, I'm not going to just tell you something that you want to hear. I'm going to tell you the truth because I love you. And that's real love. And that's who Jesus is. And that's the God that I worship. I don't know about you, but there's been days and there's been times where I felt like everyone, and I still feel that way. I feel like everyone, including my own spouse, has forsaken me. But there's one person who's never left me. And as long as I've got his approval, I don't care what none of y'all think. Y'all can think however you want, but I've got peace. Financially, psh, we're drowning. But the point is, I don't even care about that. We've got peace. Or it doesn't bother me when I mean I don't care. But from some of you guys, if, if you guys don't have it, and, and, and your whole life is just crushed. And then until you get it, you treat each other like crap. It doesn't matter, bother me because I know that this world is temporary and your opinions change constantly. Suddenly you like me because of whatever reason. Suddenly you don't like me. That's temporary. I don't even care because your opinion doesn't matter to me. So it shows me. God, God is asking you, when are you going to be consistent with your opinion about people, about yourself? That's what he's looking for, faithfulness, consistency. But that's not the way this world works. Everyone has good and bad days. God's like, when are you going to make up your mind and just have a consistent life and a consistent emotion, an emotional everything? So that's what this basically, I hope you guys got something out of that. But uh, the Christian life is about discipline. It's not about uh, self-righteousness discipline. It's about being corrected in the heart. And the only person who can do that is the Holy Spirit. We're, when we get saved, it's more like we're like toddlers. We, we can barely walk and talk and we're out of tune and we're, we're kind of all over place actually we are you know but as we walk with Christ through a relationship we become more uh, sharper like uh, like a diamond our speech our, our movement becomes more refined and that's what it's about today you have what you have but you cannot consistently live in the sin and say I'm saved some people struggle with certain sins longer than others, but there's going to be a point where you have to grow out of that. You were a child when you were saved. But as you grow in your life with Christ, you should become more like Jesus. And the world should hate you more. And you should have more peace and love. And you should start looking like God. But you're not God. You're never going to be God, but you should look more like Jesus every day. But you should have more peace and stability in your life, in your heart, 
not doesn't mean everything's going to be perfect on the outside. Your bank account and everything ain't going to just suddenly just work out. But you got to lay, there has to be a point where you just have to surrender everything. You should wake up and go to sleep with no worries. That's where God says, that's my salvation. For vain is the salvation of man. Look at man's salvation. I've got all the things, all the treasures. Solomon speaks about this. I have everything. But I have not loved the love of God in my heart. So I have nothing. I'm poor. Be rich with God. Do not be rich in this world. If you have wealth, cool. Paul talks about that. It's good. Share. Give it. Teach people how to make it. You know, but don't go around boasting and bragging as if you are you are someone. Because we all have been invited to the supper that Jesus paid. And just as fast as you were grafted in, you could be branched off. I love you guys. For for the goodness of, of death that we have been called to die to ourselves in the holy worship of God Almighty forever. These days in this earth are fleeting. They're not worth it. They're not worth it. If you think I hate you, I already forgave you. I'm just choosing to follow Christ and he has me doing other things. Everything will come to, to life and will make sense eventually. But while we're here, if you want to really live a good if you want to please God and like he's the only one to please I'll tell you that first man he's the only one to please he's the only one I don't care about what no one thinks man I care about what my father in heaven thinks and he's the only one worth pleasing because it's 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 just so good he's a good God he's a good father he's a good man and I want to be like him I hope you guys want to be like me. I've done a lot of things in this world, but nothing is more valuable to not just know him, but to do his work. I thank you for watching. God bless.